This is the OM-1 film camera from Olympus. This came out 50 years ago this year, in 1972, and it was incredibly popular. It had loads of features that people liked, and actually, it was a little bit too popular. It did so well that when it was originally released as the M1, Leica had to ask Olympus to change its name to OM-1. So here it is. And it took me a while to get my hands on one of these because it is still popular today. However, it's been 50 years and it's coming back. This is the new OM Systems OM-1. This camera is a bit of a beast. The spec is fantastic, but the special thing for me is that nod to Olympus's past and that little push towards its future too. This will be the last camera branded Olympus. And I think that's pretty special, but what's going on inside it is even more impressive. Now let's sail straight into what the OM-1 has to offer in terms of its sensor. Inside of this, we've got a micro four thirds, 20.3 megapixel backside illuminated live MOS sensor. I'm gonna break that down a little bit. So we know what micro four thirds is, we know what megapixels are. Backside illuminated, what does that mean? Basically, most CMOS sensors go color filter, then wiring and silicon, and then the photodiodes that actually pick up the light. However, that can cause um, a little bit of that light to get lost in the silicon and wires. It is minimal, but it does happen. With a backside illuminated sensor, they're a little bit more expensive to make, can be, they're a little bit more difficult to make, but basically all of the wires and all of that silicon goes underneath the photodiodes. So we go color filter, then photodiodes, and then underneath of that, we have all the wiring going on. Now in this OM-1, what we have underneath those photodiodes is a logic board, which basically means not only do we have all the wiring and the silicon under there, but we also have basically a computer that is helping the sensor to have ultra fast readout speeds. It's doing a lot of those computations at sensor level and it equals having two times more accurate AF than the EM-1 Mark III and the EM-1X. So we should see incredible AF from this thing. Although the light isn't amazing today, it's quite flat. There are some nice things to shoot, like the waves coming in here and also the Brighton Pier sign that's flashing lights all the time. But in order to get consistent light on the Brighton Pier sign or, you know, have some nice effects with this water going out, whatever, I wanted to shoot a little bit slower and handheld, which is no problem because of the image stabilization in this camera. You can easily shoot handheld for long periods of time because you've got up to seven stops of IBIS within the OM-1. So it's a very, very effective image stabilization system, which just means really no matter the light, you can use your shutter speed to make the most of it. One of the reasons I bought the new OM-1 to Brighton was one, because I wanted to pick up that beautiful film version so you could see that 50 year old version of this camera. And two was because I was really hoping for a Starling murmuration tonight and they've started. I'm so glad I had such a versatile lens with me today. Along with the OM-1, Olympus are also bringing out a new 12 to 40 f2.8 Pro lens. Now, in terms of the versatility of that focal length, it gives me a lot to play with in the zoom. It's a consistent aperture, so even when the light is dwindling, I can pop it at f2.8 throughout that range. And it's lovely quality, nice and light on the front of the camera, gives a really good balance. And you've got to remember, this is micro four thirds. So you've got an equivalent focal length of about 24 to 80. So it gives me quite a lot to work with with these starlings now murmurating. It's not just photo that this OM-1's great for. The video spec is actually super impressive. So you've got DCI 4K and standard 4K. You can shoot 4K 60p, but it's 422 10-bit. And you can shoot full HD up to 240p as well. If you're happy to use an HDMI cable, you can shoot raw out at 444 12 bit. So in terms of the video spec, it's really great. Now, Sean has been videoing uh, me today. He's behind the camera right now and I'm about to give him this so we can get some nice demo footage.
The autofocus features on the OM1 are really impressive. This has 1,053 cross-type AF points across pretty much the whole of the sensor. Now it also has a new processor, the TruePic X, which is three times faster than the processor that we see in the EM1X, which is pretty impressive. Now if you pair all of that alongside that new sensor design, which gives you two times the autofocus speeds, this is really a bit of a beast for autofocus. So today I've arranged a private falconry session with East Sussex Falconry to see just what this can do. So we've got the hawk coming towards us now. It's actually picking up the hawk's eye at times, especially when it's standing still on a perch. Um, but it's picking up when it's flying. You can see it pick up the shape of the wings, the straight line coming towards us, which is great. And it's against a very messy background, so that's quite impressive. It's a bit of a struggle for light in here, but we're doing our best. My ISO 2000, which isn't great on a micro four thirds generally, but this does have a much improved signal to noise ratio. So I'm hoping these are going to be pretty clean. Also, I'm out of breath because walking uphill. How old is Bramble? Oh gosh, nine years old. Nine years old? Yeah. You're gonna have to warn me if I trip over something, Sean. Or if I'm about to. It's too late if I've tripped. Yeah. Well, this is the best day ever. This is Bramble, the long-eared owl. I've not actually had a chance to play with the 150 to 400 before. Bramble loves it, so I thought I'd tell you about it. Now, this is a fantastic zoom lens, and it's got a built-in 1.4 times teleconverter as well. So if you think about the fact that this is on micro four thirds, we're getting an effective 300 to 800, and then a 1.4 times teleconverter on top. So for this sort of shooting where Bramble can just go off into the trees, means I can track her, keep an eye on her, and then as she gets very, very close, then I lose her a bit. Today, I'm obviously using continuous shutter quite a bit. Now, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second in RAW with this camera, which is incredible. And that's in single autofocus, and you can shoot up to 50 frames per second RAW in continuous autofocus. So you've got an amazing spec, no matter kind of what setting you're in. The buffer, <laughs> can you still see me? Yeah. The buffer on the camera has been improved from 50 raw shots on the EM1X to 92 raw shots on the OM1. So not only are you having them incredible frame rates to shoot with, but also you've got a buffer that can handle more. Now you're not always going to be shooting at 120 frames per second or even 50 frames per second, but it does mean you have the leeway to, if you need to, to get moments of action like uh, an owl flying onto your shoulder. That's the best take of anything we've ever done. <laughs> Massive thank you to Gerard from East Sussex Falconry and the wonderful birds we've seen today. They've been fantastic for testing out just what the OM1 can do, even though the lighting has been pretty difficult. Now I've got a little bit more to tell you about the camera. The OM1 is absolutely jam-packed full of features. And one of the ones I want to highlight because I really love it is the high resolution mode. Now I've used this on the EM1X and it was great. Basically it works by slightly moving the sensor using the IBIS system. It takes a few shots, stitches them together, and you get your high resolution shot. Now it has two modes. It has handheld and it has tripod. Handheld gets you a 50 megapixel shot. A tripod gets you an 80 megapixel shot. The other feature I want to bring to your attention is the built-in ND. Now this is obviously an electronic ND, but you can select up to ND64, which allows you to do beautiful long exposures, maybe get some water movement, that sort of thing. Now, obviously, 
There is a difference between electronic ND and having something on the front of the lens, but there are some big perks to it too. Now, if you are using something like a fisheye lens or a really wide angle lens, sometimes you actually cannot use filters or you have to carry a special one with you instead of your standard set. With this, obviously it's in the camera, so you don't need to think about any of that. It'll apply to any lens you have and you don't have to carry anything with you, which is great. From the short time we've had the OM1, I've been pretty impressed with the design. The grip is really nice on the front and there's a little lip just underneath this front dial, which means your finger sits really happily there. If you're using anything like the 8 25 or the new 12 to 40 that you can get in a kit with this, it's very, very comfy as is. When I was using the 50, sorry, the 150 to 400 when we were doing all that fantastic falconry, I did pop the um, little bottom grip on and it made it super well balanced. I didn't even have any batteries on it. I just popped it on, you know, just to give me a little bit of extra handhold, make it a little bit easier in portrait mode. The rubbery gripness to the body is actually really nice and there's a nice thumb hold on the back as well. Now, if the weather does take a turn for the worst, luckily it hasn't rained yet, but we have had extremely gray weather, the camera will be fine. It's dust and splash proof. It's IP53 rated. You can have a look online exactly what that means. But basically, if it gets drizzly, gets a bit rainy, you're not going to have any problems with the OM1. The viewfinder on this is something else I've enjoyed using. It's a 5.76 million dot viewfinder. So it's nice and bright and also very high detail. So very easy to see what you're doing, especially when I was tracking the birds earlier. It was quite nice to use. And the screen is fine too. It's fully articulating, which I like, especially if you're a hybrid shooter and you're going to be doing some video. Maybe you need to test where your talent's going to sit if you're doing an interview piece or something like that. Really nice to have that fully articulating screen for both stills and video. So down this side, we have a mic input, we have headphones, we have an HDMI out, because remember you can get that 444 12-bit raw recording out, so HDMI port and the USB-C port here, which is how I've been charging it, doesn't come with a charger. On the side here, we've got dual SD card slots, both of those are UHS-2, so you can put your really nice fast V90 cards in there, which is what you're going to need if you want 120 frames per second raw. We've also got a little remote switch port just there, nice and handy, doesn't really get in the way. And under here, this is where we see the battery. The battery in this one is the BLX1. It's SEPA rated to about 520 shots. Now remember, SEPA rating is they turn the camera on, take a picture, view it for two seconds, turn the camera back off and repeat. So it's not really real world usage. And today I've changed card and I know the card I was using this morning had 1,350 shots left on it. I know I've taken over that. So already we've more than doubled what the SEPA rating is. So in a real world environment, you're gonna be able to probably shoot with this battery all day I would imagine. Right now after quite a few hours of shooting and way over 1300 shots we're at 63 percent so you've got a lot to work with I think on this camera. Features wise it's packed, ports wise it's packed, it's a really nice powerhouse bit of kit really. 50 years after the original OM1 was released I think this is a pretty nice camera to honour that memory absolutely feature packed, travel friendly, nice and lightweight with all those OM system lenses that you can use on it. It's just a really nice system to be a part of. Now, if you'd like to find out more about this new OM1, then you can pop onto the website. There's a ton of information on there and I'll pop a link in the description for you as well. Or of course, you can always ask me a question by popping it in the comments. I'd love to know what you think about this new body. Now, I hope this video has been really helpful for you and I hope you join me again soon for some more videos from Wax Photo Video.